Greetings YouTube! Today I'm going to do a video on an S6000 series Mila canister vacuum, or cylinder as you guys would call it overseas. Um, now what we have here is not your traditional Mila. These are available in white plastic and black plastic uh, currently from Mila, and at the time they were available in tactical colors. They were, you had flat dark earth, OD green, black, and white. But they also made the red velvet version. Uh, so this machine was completely covered in red velvet and it was intended to for two th reasons they did this uh, according to Mila. Now there's a third reason which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, so the idea was the red velvet would protect your delicate furniture. Okay, okay. Um, the other thing is that it would get a conversation started with the customer. So you'd have this on your counter and the customer would be like, that's weird. And then the customer would say, well, that's going to get covered in pet hair. And then that would be the end of the conversation. So it wasn't the most successful idea. Now, I think there's a real third reason why Mila is obsessed with velvet. Because they also went on to put velvet in the tool compartment, which makes absolutely no sense, of the uh, S8000 Unique, um, which they would later remove, but they would keep the velvet bumper on the C3. Uh, brilliant. So my third reason why Mila put red velvet on is just some engineer really, really liked red velvet, maybe even a red velvet fetish, uh, just inappropriately. So that's, that's why I think they were so obsessed with this. Now there was a previous version of the red velvet called, uh, on the 500 series, which came years before, which actually didn't have red velvet, it was just a plasti uh in a special paint that would then come off. Um, so we're going to just go over this like it's a normal S6. Um, so first off, I have it parked. Every Mila does that. So that's nothing special, except if we look at the parking spaces, you will see right here, maybe we'll bring it a little closer to the camera. Um, you will see right here that there is a plastic thing. Now this is shipping material that had to be pulled out uh, on both sides of the cleaner. Um, for some reason they left this in to make it look smooth, I think for pictures, but they, they left it on all the machines. And most customers never pulled it out. Now I've only pulled it out on one side for the parking space. Um, I don't see why I need two parking spaces. Now another thing about the S6 here in the US is overseas, when it comes to parking, the unit would actually park like so. We in the U.S. never got the uh, the proper hose, and that would do that. Um, now, speaking of the hose end, what we have here is we have a suction control, and this is to relieve suction if you get it stuck on an area rug. Um, if for some reason you just aren't going to adjust it through here. Now it does have six settings, and we'll now turn it on and let you experience the six settings. That's the quiet mode, that's full strength. Now the other thing about the S6 series is the tools will swivel only halfway around, right here. And I get a, a lot of people say, oh, these attachments are gonna fall off. As you can see, not the case. The other thing people think are these attachments are going to bump into walls. Now I'm going to demonstrate with the wand where the edges of the vacuum are. And at this angle you can see that this does not touch the walls because the tools are really within the parameters of the body of the canister. And it's quite the mind uh, game about that. Now if you don't like these tools, this pops off and you can store them separately. Um, now the other thing that they would give you on this is they would give you a nice long metal telescoping wand. It's about four and a half feet. Um, so nice and long stainless steel wand. They would also give you a, uh, they could call it an Alltech, but it's a bare floor tool. It's just the same switchable mono wheel bare floor tool uh, with lint pickers with the brushes that retract. Uh, that Mila's been doing forever, and I, I think this is really one of the best bare floor tools in the business, and there's a reason they've been making the same basic tool for over 30 years. Um, now, on the body of the canister, we also have one other control 
right there, which is the bag. So you have the full bag check indicator there. Now you have casters all the way around, which allow the machine to maneuver very, very well, uh, which you'll see in the uh, point of view vacuuming video. When we open this, there's a lever here. And now here is something that's kind of curious about the 5000 series and the 6000 series did this. When you open the bag, it's already pulled the bag partially off the assembly for you to make it easier for you to pull the bag out. The problem is that every time you you uh, close it, if you're just checking the bag, you must then reseat the bag. Otherwise, you will go to close it and it, the hole will line up off the bag and dirt will fall around the bag. They later stopped doing this on the cleaners, but that's just kind of a quirk of the S6000. And of course, this uses the F and uh, FJM bag, which is the smaller of the Mila bags, though I do have the uh, proper vintage original bag in here and I have a box of these, so th this will never see anything but those. And I, I really, you can see my other video explaining the difference between Mila bags. Um, so inside is business as usual. We just have a pre-motor filter, mostly to catch the bag lint, but also in case your bag bursts. And then we just have an air clean exhaust filter on this. There's no HEPA filter was sold with this, though you can add a HEPA filter if you choose. Um, another little curious detail is the uh, bag check indicator is this little accordion thing. And later this plastic housing would be removed from almost every Mila and just be this accordion thing. Uh, but this is a very accurate bag check indicator. And then we have a silencing foam here. This is really just for noise dampening. Now another feature you can't see but I'm going to point out where it is is in here there's a suction relief valve. If you get too much suction it opens up um, to allow cool air to move the motor in case you get a clog and you don't know about it. Something like that saves the motor. Now another thing about an S6 versus an S2 is on the straight suction S6s I don't know if you can see it but there is power. What that means is you can, in theory, buy the hose from a Topaz uh, or an Electro Plus, as they call it now, and uh, ho hook up a power head if you wanted to. Uh, but you can't do that with an S2, the uh, C2. You can only do that with the, with the S6000. And this is a 6270. It was produced in 2011. And you can see I've got the original demo stickers on there from the dealer I worked at. Now, like all uh, modern Mila canisters made within the past 30 years, you have these lovely um, casters on here. So it really adds to maneuverability. Also, the size of this, it's really, really slim. Um, it just maneuvers well. Now, versus an S4000, it's about so much taller. Uh, and that was to allow for a couple different things. So this was intended to be kind of a premium compact canister. Um, which just really never sold here in the United States very well. That category is not a, it's kind of a niche market. Um, but this was one of the first canisters sold with the one-touch cord rail. I mean, you touch it once, it sucks up the cord. So that was kind of a cool feature on it as well. Um, and now, a notable thing about this is some of these early canisters these were sold with a seven-year motor in plastic casing warranty. And that warranty was pretty important on this model because this is one of the only Milas that ever had any casing problems. So this black plastic thing here that hides the switch button under it, the little hinges right here, every once in a while would break. Not on all of them, but enough of them that we would stock the part. And if you have an S6, it's still under warranty and it's still under warranty and that breaks goes free into your dealer and they'll change it for you. Um, so that, that was kind of a strange thing that happened. Again, it didn't happen on all the models. It seemed more to affect the Topaz. I never saw it really on the Quartz and I've only, uh, I've only seen three of these Red Velvets ever get sold the whole time I was selling them. Um, this one, of course, I packed away in the box. Um, bought it many years later and you can go to my unboxing video if you want to hear the story about that. So let's get to some vacuuming.
gonna do a pickup test with the Mila S6000 or S2 as Mila calls it. So what I have here is I have some pet hair, some flower, and of course some fruity pebbles. And then that's repeated again on the bare floor. Fruity pebbles, flower, and pet hair. So we're gonna run over this and we're gonna see how it does. results I think they speak for themselves so I did a normal pass on the carpet I did a normal pass on the bare floor and then I tried to show the edge cleaning right there which is why I was going off to the side uh, because the edge cleaning feature of a uh, this tool is often underrated but you can see right there where it allows uh, suction to flow in from the edges um, so you can see Bare floor, absolutely perfect. Now the carpet, again, this is not designed for wall-to-wall -wall carpet. It's designed for area rugs. Um, if we look at the carpet, the pet hair is actually gone. That, that's what I'm amazed. But I have one bit of fruity pebble um, left on my carpet. Um, now I'm curious if there's any embedded dirt in here, but I, I suspect not. Um, when, when the Mila is operating like it is, they tend to clean very, very well, even without a brush roller. So one of the criticisms about a lot of Mila vacuums is the reach. Now, I can't quite get into this corner without really stressing the vacuum, but I want to explain to you what the hose and the cleaning radius really is of this vacuum. And I plugged it into where I usually vacuum from in my house is this central vacuum lid, and I plugged in right next to it. So really, I can't complain about the radius of this little compact guy. Usually somebody's doing a smaller house than what I'm doing. But it gets pretty darn far for what it is. I was able to do my whole kitchen uh, and my living room without having to replug it. So there's about two feet in the corner that I can't get uh, over in the dining room. But I also could have plugged it in somewhere differently. But I wanted to see, again, where the ratio was. So I think if I had been smarter about plugging it in and plugged it into the center right here, I think I could get the whole area. So let's test that real quick. Octavio has decided to join us. So we're going to roll this around real quick. Here we go. Yeah. So So it would appear that plugging the canister in strategically, just like any other vacuum, would help you with cleaning radius. And if you have plugs everywhere, like I do in this house, it's not a problem. But if you have an older house without plugs, 
that's where something like a SIBO with its 40 foot electrical cord might benefit you over this 25 foot that this machine has. Now, the, the other thing with this cleaning radius is, is I'm quite impressed. Is I, I think I'm getting everywhere pretty much that my hide hose would get. Uh, not my hide hose, but my plug-in uh, central vac hose would get with canister. Now there's one other thing I wanted to cover when we're talking about the cord, which is putting it away. So you're all done, you're ready to put your vacuum away, it's time to roll up the cord. So this has the one touch, so we're going to touch it once, exactly as advertised, and that is a great feature. So I really want to explain low reach, because it's something people don't often talk about uh, when they're reviewing vacuum cleaners. So this nozzle, you can see, will fit under this bed with ease. Now I'm going to compare that to an already low nozzle, but I want you to see just how it barely rubs there. So you can see how much lower this is going to get. And again, this doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it basically gets as low as the wand is thick. So it's as low as you can get and still allow the airflow. And that, when you're cleaning under a bed, is a big deal. So again, something that's often looked with vacuums is the width. As you can see, this is a great nozzle, but it doesn't quite fit in between the air legs. So that's where this nozzle, if you've got a lot of tight furniture, you can see the difference there. You need to go in between and around things will really come in handy. Again, one reason I really like this particular style nozzle. So let's talk about the Red Velvet and stair cleaning and the S6000 in general. So right now I have it balanced on the stairs and you can see there's plenty of room for it to balance on your stairs. These are the narrower of the two in my house. And I give you this nice upholstery tool with a lint picker. So let's give it a try. You can see the lint it picked up. Of course, we're just going to clean that off. Now, we're also going to give the turbo tool. I have a genuine Mila turbo tool here. And we're going to do the other half of the stairs with the turbo tool and see the difference. Um, as always, go on Instagram and follow performance reviews. The link's below. the turbo tool just fine, but I'm not sure that the uh, conventional Mila tool didn't do a better job. I will let you guys decide. Definitely comment below about that. I have to say, after vacuuming with this on the stairs, this might be my go-to stair vacuum. This is super easy. 
fits either way on the stairs. It's just got the hose is pretty long. I'll give you an idea. Got on the bottom of the stairs, we can reach the top of this uh, flight of stairs here. So you've got plenty of reach uh, with the hose this S6000 has. So I wanted to take a minute to explain what kind of flooring is appropriate, what kind of flooring is not appropriate for this tool. So if you don't have a lot of embedded dirt, you don't have animals, you don't have a zoo full of kids, um, this straight suction nozzle will actually clean carpet very well and be easy to push if it's a low enough pile carpet. And then explain that. So you're just gonna push with minimum effort. And I'm gonna just two fingers here. And then this can be switched. Now I'm going to demonstrate the carpet that this is not appropriate for. So again we're going to do that same test and see if I can push it with two fingers and push this with the vacuum on. Oops. Try switch it to the lower setting. Nope. So this is not appropriate for this kind of vacuum. And you can see this is the kind of carpet, it's called soft carpet. If I push down on it, my hand, you can see where my handprint was and it's, uh, it's really, really thick. So this will not work for anything but a machine with a brush roller and a height adjustment. Just to show you what an S6 uh, straight suction is not appropriate for. With this, you would want to get something with an electric power head. We're going to take a minute to talk about the Mila manual. Now, because I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep this vacuum, uh, I'm keeping it in the bag. But I will explain to you what's in here. There are pictures to models that do not coincide with US models. There are things in this manual that will not help you. There is a diagram that points to the vacuum, gives you a name for the part, that's it. And it will tell you to use genuine bags and filters and not to suck up water. That's all that's in the manual. If you want anything more than that, consult your local dealer. So that's something I will say is kind of a negative with any Mila product. As Now this could change at any time, but as of right now their, their manuals are quite lacking. Um, so I, I bought this with the intention of uh, reselling it since I have the box and I have all the original stuff and I've now cleaned my whole house with it. It's quite the joy to use. It's really lightweight. I would say if you are needing something more versatile than like an Auric Upright or you're elderly, this, might, this S6 slash C2 platform might be for you. If you have a mid-size to small house, this product is for you. If you have a bunch of children, a zoo full of pets, and a farm, this is not your vacuum. If you are doing uh, 6,000 plus square feet like I am here, this is not your vacuum. Um, so the reason we don't recommend this for larger houses is this machine uh, has the smaller FJM bag. The cord is decent. Uh, it's still under 30 feet. You only have a, a 25 foot cord. Uh, it might be like 25.5 or something like that, but it's 25 feet. Um, your hose is really long, so that's that's a that's a big plus. And you have a full size telescoping stainless steel wand. Um, but again, there's no electro nozzle on this particular S6000 series. 
now you can get currently they do make straight suction models or they make ones with power heads but again this is kind of a vintage item um, similar to a cord or uh, a jasper or, or topaz or something like that um, in terms of the Mila models um, the parking on the side is excellent storage is excellent the machine's maneuverability as I showed in the video is great with these casters all the way around um, and just a note, never buy a vacuum, a canister vacuum that doesn't have casters all the way around. They just maneuver so much better with casters. Uh, not once did this thing flip, tip, uh, even bump into the wall. It was, it was just followed me and tracked perfectly. Um, the parking position in the rear is quite nice. It's quite handy. Um, really the only thing this vacuum is lacking is a, is a power brush. And again, it wasn't, it wasn't this particular model's intention. Um, so as always, please give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Definitely follow us on Instagram, uh, and have a wonderful day. Well, that wraps up my review.